is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. Dun 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 no. dun. No. Nope. Just this stop. This is a sham. <laughs> Welcome to DBL. How's up? Sorry, it was Erica's dress. <laughs> Dang, extra, extra real I was, about it. I was it. waiting for it. I turned around when I was sitting at the desk. I was like, damn, Erica. Yeah. You look beautiful. You look awesome. uh, thank you. Yeah, Th but, well, thanks. Yeah. And I mean, we're focused on Erica. You look beautiful, look Tori. Like a highlighter. Th thank no, you. you look great. I was saying, I, I, we're focused on you, but Tori, been, I think we can say, has recently signed a contract with uh, Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and we're really happy for Stop it. Stop I, it. I, 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 that was so <laughs> That's a great thing. All right, we, we better move on. That's right. <laughs> oh. Jennifer Lopez, thanks, Jure, re, uh, <laughs> revealed she, oh, this is some big news, guys. Buckle up. Okay. She revealed she wore not one, but three dresses <gasps> in her Georgia oh wedding. That's God. right. <laughs> Round of applause. Yeah. All right, so in her newsletter, which is super embarrassing. Which I still get. I'll still get. Wow, that's even more embarrassing. <laughs> Jen showed oh, off the I custom Ralph that. Lauren gown nice. that she walked down the aisle in. The high-necked gown was a take on the designer's classic turtleneck column dress. We all know it. Check out this train. Apparently, 1,000 handkerchiefs were attached to the back to create a long, ruffled skirt. Love. Yeah, that is beautiful. That sounds like a movie tour we'll watch on Friday night. A thousand <laughs> handkerchiefs. <laughs> Like sad rom com. It was so moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to cry about the thousand stories from the week before. All right. Next, Jen changed into this gown that featured pearls and Swarovski oh, wow. crystals. Oh. It took 3,000 children. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, it took 30 um, artists 700 hours to hand embroider them on the dress. <laughs> wow, that one got some that feedback. Was, yeah, All right. I didn't see that coming. That was, funny. that was very funny. Jed also wore another custom Ralph Lauren dress that featured a mermaid silhouette and removable hood and more crystals. The gowns are estimated to cost $1 million each. All right, nice. we spiced up that story. Yeah, yeah, very well done. And I work in bridal. When anyone famous wears, you work. I worked in bridal. You worked in bridal. In okay. bridal, <laughs> hardcore guys. And whenever someone famous wore a wedding dress for the next two years, that would be the thing. So Kate Middleton, long sleeves. Do you guys remember this? High neck, low back. That's all anybody wanted for the next two years. So expect some turtlenecks. Expect hoods to be really in and crystals to be the next big thing. You're welcome. <laughs> because of J Lo, it right? All That's all. It creates an entire industry. Off wow. of her. Yep. I, I, I was like, uh, I, I, had, I already had a take that I was like, that's a little much, three dresses. I don't know if I'm feeling that. And everyone was dressed, I was like, that's really nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it of course. Amazing. I mean, it, it, it was amazing. I was like, I don't know if I would want that for, for my wedding because it's a little extra, but like, how about for your sixth wedding? Would you want that for your sixth yeah, wedding? Yeah, she goes, she goes hard. Every wedding that's should like have a different dresses. thing. So? <laughs> that's a lot. There's a lot of wedding dresses out there, and someone's got to wear them. She snatched so them all up. There you she go. Did. Yes. So you I, like these. Which one was your favorite? Uh, the Ralph Lauren. I think. Well, they were all Ralph you, Lauren. Or the first Ralph the Lauren. The first one, the high neck. Um, yeah. The, it, I think anytime you have something so that's classic, amazing. like, yeah. it's classy but super sexy yep. like it's just that's a perfect way to put yeah, it and also uh, you guys love it. do you guys see the sleeves in that that will be the thing that cap scalloped sleeves that will be the thing every love girl that wants. well and that's great too because a lot of people get the are conscious of, of the I, I was going to call it something. Yes. <laughs> the I, I was going to call it something I can't really call it on TV. Uh, it's you this know, area. The, side the, perspective. the meat yes. the meat in the armpit. Mm -hmm. yes. Is that called something? Yes, it is. Yes, it we'll is. say it on the show. Okay. We'll yeah. say it later. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm telling it on TV. But you could cover up. No, you can't. Okay. We still have our mics, Jeff. Mic. Yes. Oh! <laughs> you are a big brother. You should know. You can't just cover it's up. It's been 13 years. <laughs> All right. Well, she looked beautiful. I'm more yes. clowning. But that first one, I think, was the best, yeah. in my opinion, too. All right. So it looks like the end of the road for Sylvester Stallone and his wife, Jennifer Flavin. They're divorcing after 25 years of marriage. Jennifer, who is 54, filed for divorce in Florida from the actor, who is now 76. They both look fantastic. Yeah. Red flags were raised after Sly was spotted getting a tattoo of his wife's, or of his wife's face covered with the image of his old dog from Rocky Buckus, if you remember. <laughs> Jennifer recently posted photos of her with her three daughters, writing, quote, these girls are my priority, nothing else matters, the four of us forever. We oh. talked about this yesterday, and I was like, maybe he's just getting some That's what I thought. new work done, and that dog meant a lot to him. 
I have a store. Apparently, I was way off. Well, no, well, Butkus, the dog, he had no money, and he had to sell Butkus to some guy. This is a rumor we've heard over and over again. Apparently, after he made all the money on Rocky, he went and got Butkus back. And so that dog, like, means a lot. He's also in the movie Rocky. So Butkus means a lot to him, but I think it's pretty clear that he's like, but I mean, I'm that, over you. But I mean, and also that post, and it's like, you know, as somebody us, that has whatever. children, uh, it, what do you guys think about that post? Because whatever from his wife have, yes yeah. uh, just the four of us forever it excludes their father which is half of all of all three of them and it makes it seem like half of you so there's something wrong with half of you well, I, I don't know what happened obviously but it's, right. it's, a, it's a weird message to convey no, I and I respect that. Mm -hmm. I respect that you think like that because a lot of people don't. Um, but I do think that he fired the first shot because yeah, he could have just covered up the tattoo and said nothing. But, but not he made a point with the dog, with the dog right, Like he, he made a point of posting it, and then not only that, we speculated about it. Does this mean the end of the marriage? And then lo and behold, 24 hours later, the announcement was made. So I think at that point, you know, there's a. There's a leverage situation. Yeah. Like, you know, Sylvester Stallone is a household name. You know, he's the more famous one. The big bank takes little bank situation. Um, so she can say what she wants at that point right. <laughs> because right. he's right. already initiated it. Right. Yeah. Right. I was just thinking really just of the daughters. But yeah, at, at the dog tattoo is equal, if not worse, than the post. So I get it. It's a famous dog. It's a famous dog. Remember that show where they used to cover up people's tattoos, like on MTV? Tattoo redo or something like that? that it was amazing. And like the artwork, like they took a woman's face and made it into a dog. Beautiful. It's like they do great work, not meaning that, but right. just things <laughs> in general. It did look good, but it definitely was, even when you try and say it nicely. It, it, sounded, it sounded terrible. Yeah. It sounded terrible, yeah. yeah. Right when it came out, I was like, yeah, that's not good. Okay, so <laughs> Nicole Kidman is causing a stir over her new magazine cover. Nicole showed off her fit physique on the cover of Perfect Magazine. Some praised her for her own body. Others said it was photoshopped. It's not the first time this has happened. Other females like Serena Williams have been so-called fit shamed for sporting muscles. Those are haters. Gymnast Simone Biles has been called ugly on so me social media because of her toned figure, and actress Brooke Shields has been criticized for being fit over 50 and wearing a bikini, as have so many other people in Hollywood, right? Yeah. I don't know what what leads to this other than just people being haters? I think uh, Britney Spears said it best, and I think I'm going to butcher it, but I miss, uh, miss extra, extra, this just in. I miss the, she's too fat, now she's too thin. Like, there's just no way to win. <laughs> like, that, that, so, you should have added that, that rhyme, too. Yeah, like, yeah you write there, there isn't <laughs> any way to win. I mean, I experienced this personally, and I'm not a celebrity. Like, when I decided to do fitness competitions, like, people had been talking about how much weight I had gained. And then I did fitness competitions, and then all of a sudden, I was too manly. So it's like, I, I'm good with however I am. I don't really need the approval of others, but I think when Nicole Kidman stands or says, something it's really to be like for someone who might need that and say I mean look at Nicole Kidman she's getting that backlash so of course I'm gonna get it so of course she has to speak out about it but why do we give it any credence right like Serena Williams is one of the best athletes of, of in woman now. history right yeah, yes. and she looks fantastic why do we give any credence to people like she's too muscular your opinion doesn't matter right all these fantastic athletes all these fantastic women why do we give it any credit well the problem is it, it Sorry to interrupt no, you, but please. The, the historical and social context is that a woman was you were able to project whatever you wanted on that woman. What she wore, what she had on, was your opinion of her mattered. It was in magazines, it's in media, it's in tabloids, it's in this. She's fat, she's thin, she's muscular, you saw it all. So that became the way of, oh, if I see a woman dressed in a bikini, I get to say something about it. And it just became the way it is. And only recently, in the past couple years, have we been like, please don't talk about my body. So the vocabulary wasn't there before to say, that's sexist, that's misogynistic, you're a hater, for instance. Nobody had that vocabulary because to be, for me, Me Too and the women's movement came up at a time and says, Boundaries, stop it, and now people get but, it. But Al, let me oh, take. I appreciate what you said about the women, but I think it's everybody in general, right? I had a mustache for two weeks. We got a million comments about your dumb mustache. It's everybody. It's Brad Pitt wears a skirt. It's this guy wears that. It's everybody. Why are we giving? Why do we do stories like this? Why is that like media is so attached to that when people are bashing other people and putting them down? Because we do the positive ones as well, and that, that that's what I'm getting. That, that's what I want to get to. Is it seems like we're talking in generalities. 
of course, in, in terms of women and people, but really it's certain women. Certain people can say, I lost this amount of weight or I've gained this amount of weight and I, I'm pregnant and I'm big and beautiful and they'll get a bunch of comments supporting them. If somebody like Lisa Renna posts a picture of her in a bikini, she's going to get a bunch of hate. The well, idea, that's because she's nasty. Yeah, well, I, the, I don't know that. But I'm well, saying, I just used an example. Yeah. All, all I'm saying is there are certain people that are allowed to be attacked for their body, and there are certain people that are not. I guarantee you when Simone Biles is attacked for her body, she is not going to have the online defense that Lizzo would have if she was attacked for her body. Mm -hmm. And it's just because of the way people feel about those two human beings. And I'm not saying people don't love Simone and Lizzo. I'm just saying that when somebody is in great shape, not a lot of people can identify with that. Right. Uh, I, people I do can't wanna... be identify with being Lizzo's shape. I think all of us can. Well, you know, our each experience is our own. I do want to make an editorial note uh, for anybody who might be listening and affected by the nasty comment. I was referring to her character on Real Housewives Real of Beverly Housewives. Hills, not her physical body, because I wouldn't have done that. Thank oh. you. We, yes. I think we all, we <laughs> but, all did that. But well, I, you knew. Yes. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> you did it. They were already writing in. Uh -huh. Like, how but dare I'm, she? But I'm really happy to hear you say, why do we give in to that? That's what I want more people, not just men, like you said. Said, to do stop giving credence to it stop giving airtime to it I appreciate what you said about it well, would you not ag it? agree that like a lot of the the attack comments are from women as well and we'll talk about that in the break I think women on women hating one women is a big issue yes oh yeah <laughs> Nobody hates on you more than somebody who look like that you. Let me just tell exactly you. Right. <laughs> See, now we're breaking it down yes. a little bit. Coming up on DBL, Joan Collins speaks out about other women. No, I'm just kidding. About how rude it is to ask a woman her age. Kind of, kind of, kind of. And is Harry Styles a, the new king of pop? Why Michael Jackson's family says Harry hasn't earned that crown. Closed captioning provided by... I think it is one of those stories that we're all going to be like, what? Oh, Who crazy. raised yes. you? Why am I right all the time? <laughs> <You're not laughs> am I going crazy? Welcome to another oh, week yeah. of Jeff's Mustache. Wow. I wasn't bad from Strauss fashion. Like do you, white people do you think fashion. after you, someone's oh, been called yeah. the king of pop, you can have another king? Once you're I, king of pop, in, in, in hip hop you can. I mean, it's like it, you, it's really like summer to summer. Like who's the king of New York? Who's the king of the so South? So it changes. For a while, it's Ti. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and he's an older guy now, and now there's other younger rappers coming up. So I think that it's it's almost like an unofficial ranking, like in boxing. That he's the pound for pound champ. That's not a sure, real belt. Sure. But it's just like everybody oh, knows like, that wow, all the boxers of all the different weight classes, this person's the best. But it's, you can't. Like you can't prove it. Like you could, I could prove that I'm that the score I had I score more points. But there are certain things that you. It's just kind of in the social context. Like he's the best oh, boxer right now. Yeah, he's the most popular. She's the best yeah. MMA. Like yeah. a while, like Ronda Rousey. Yes, what she was the like, champ, but she was also like everybody knew she was the best. Yes. Prince. But Watermelon then, Sugar is the only song I know. I don't know if Prince. Prince is a good call. Watermelon Sugar. The King of Pop music, though. No, he's not. King of Pop. Prince is pop. Yeah. Prince is pop, but in terms of like, I'm talking. Like, Why don't we when, talk when about when you're, when you're, when oh, you're yeah. on television? <laughs> 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 like, Who do you guys think yeah. the Queen of Pop but, but is? About, Let's ask that. What about the, well, yeah, Queen of right Pop? Right now, the Madonna. I would think. But then yeah. Jan Janet Jackson. Remember we did that story? Her and yeah, Janet Jackson had the But it's like, are you talking about your generation or right now? That's. But that's the thing. It's got to be. That's like. And is it forever? Ever. Right, and then like, can your generation be yeah. king and queen? Wouldn't or it be like prince, prince and princess? princess. Right. right, like. Because no. oh. is, is there another king once there already is one? Right. right. right well, because right, right. like Michael Jackson will forever be like king of pop. Cool. We all love that. But like currently, I don't think anyone can really step up to that. To be completely honest. They said Usher. Didn't? No, no. <laughs> you can't say Usher. <laughs> well, 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 no. we'll get into it. But yeah. I don't know if you can reach Michael Jackson with an album. I don't think you can. Say
Welcome back. The discussion was great. At the break. I hope we can continue that for television. Has Harry Styles been crowned the king? So Rolling Stone UK recently put Harry on the cover in a pair of boxers and a faux fur coat. It's important that you guys know it's faux and proclaimed him the king of pop. But Michael Jackson's family is not having it. Michael's estate even trademarked the phrase king of pop. Michael's nephew tweeted, quote, there is no new king of pop. The title has been retired. No disrespect to Harry Styles. Give him his own unique title. Usher is also causing a stir by proclaiming himself the king of R&B. He told Radio Andy he stands on the shoulders of artists like Marvin Gaye, Little Richards, and Prince, but now it's his turn to be king. Let's listen. King, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I've been working to the point where I do own that, and I do deserve that, and I ain't going to ask for it no more. You're going to no. give it because yeah. I didn't work for it. All right, well, let's start with Michael Jackson and uh, Harry Styles. Is there even a comparison no. there? No. No, I don't think Harry Styles has the body of work yet. No. Michael Jackson had. Uh, and, and also, uh, you But know, he sure has the body. He has the body. And, and <laughs> full disclosure, before anybody don't thinks we I'm, all have I'm biased, I want to show this. Erica, what's the last song that I shazammed? Read that. As It Was. By Harry Styles. Yesterday, I had to return some pants at uh, Nordstrom Rack. <laughs> and I was like, I like this song. At Nordstrom and I sh yeah, Oh, I do that all the time. And it, I was like, it was Harry Styles yesterday. I don't, I don't know his music, and I liked, I liked what I heard. Mm -hmm. But also, but I don't think that I should be shazamming somebody and not knowing who they are. I'm not. Well, that's what I was gonna say. When's the last time you shazammed a Michael Jackson? Right. So, I'm like, a, who sings but, this? But Michael yeah. Jackson had a much bigger. <laughs> there were much less avenues for other artists to come in at right. that point. It was just like Michael Jackson was on MTV all the time, so everybody saw it. You know, cable was new and nobody had options. Now that people have options, I think it's harder to capture that that audience. Mm -hmm. We're saturated. I just don't think like I can name ten Michael Jackson songs. I can name you Watermelon Sugar. That's about all. And Al's new one. Or what? your new one. I'm talking about what you said. The body right. of work just isn't there at all for. But how about for different generations? So maybe our generation, he's the king of pop. Harry Styles. I mean, I would put Justin Bieber oh, against thousand him. Percent. And I think he's Bieber the king. If we're him. doing generations, if we're doing just generations. Yeah, I think it's a little early. Yeah. Like maybe for they can be them. like, uh, I don't know. What did they make Harry? A, a Dutch? A, oh, it's a, yeah. a sir. They a knight sir. Him. They knight yeah, him? They will be probably knighting him as sir. Here. I'm sure. And can we have this do. conversation without talking about Bobby Brown? <laughs> well, I, I just. Mean, Bobby ruled the 90s. Right, but I, I mean, to Michael your point era. about MTV and stuff, that's an accessibility issue, too. Because, of course, there, it was a less saturated market, but also the idea of everyone having an MTV was not real. You know, maybe terrestrial radio was, but now everybody has access to all of these people on their phones. Mm -hmm. So the idea that someone would be named King and we when it's can't so come up, right, 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 right. Um, but also, it's Rolling Stone UK, and we know the press over there has some issues. Yeah. So it is what it is. I hear. But you. also, he's killing it, Harry Styles. I yeah. mean, if he keeps of on this trajectory, away. of course, yeah. But if he stays on this trajectory, if I keep Shazam and stuff at uh, Nordstrom <laughs> Rack. We might have to have another he, conversation. I mean, he's, he's definitely in the media. How about let's go to Usher real fast. He threw a name out like, I mean, the greats, Marvin Gaye, but he threw Prince out there. Dude. Right. You're the king and over also, Prince? Don't don't pro proclaim yourself the king. <laughs> Should I call you king? He's like, yeah, sure. Yeah, you can't, I guess. <laughs> like, yeah, when you come up with the king, it doesn't hold as much power as someone else making you king. But what if, I don't know, what, some people aren't kind of fake humble. If you're like, I saw a t-shirt one time that says, not bragging if you can do it. And Usher does have a body of work. I don't know if I'd ever naturally think about him as the king of pop, but I think he has an argument. Yeah, he's I mean, in he, the royal, royal kingdom. He's an earl, of course. There we go. <laughs> I mean, the man has his own money. What else do you want? <laughs> Give me some. Usher bucks. I love. I love any time we could bring up a coming to America line in there. No one got. No man got has it. his own money. You're saying the boy's got his own money. And when oh. I say the boy's got his own money, the boy's got his own money. Oh. Come on, Erica. No, I mean Usher literally. I thought you were throwing out some Usher bucks. Yeah, me and Al always try yeah. to sneak it in. All right, coming up on DBL. I got it, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Joe Collins <laughs> is talking about why it's never okay to ask a woman her age. Do you agree? Suffer from pain? The two and a half year pause on federal student loan payments is set to expire in a week. On September 1st, millions of Americans will need to resume paying off that debt. That is, unless the Biden administration extends the pause, which it may do this week. 
so we're verifying some fast facts on federal student loans. Our sources are the Congressional Research Service and Mark Kantrowitz, a student financial aid expert who has written nine books on planning and paying for college. As of March 31st, about 45 million people owed a total of more than $1.6 trillion in federal student loan debt. That's according to this CRS report. 16% of borrowers were 24 years old or younger. 64% were between 25 and 49, and 20% were 50 or older. As for how much people owe, 15 million people owe $10,000 or less. 21 million people owe more than $10,000, but less than $50,000. And about 9 million people owe more than $50,000. President Biden has previously floated the idea of canceling up to $10,000. So if that were to happen, assuming there's no income cap, that would totally eliminate student loan debt for 15 million people, a third of all borrowers. So we drilled into those numbers a bit further using Department of Education data. With no income cap, canceling up to $10,000 of student loans would completely eliminate debt for 294,000 Virginians, more than 230,000 Marylanders, and nearly 29,000 people living in the district. As for what that would cost the government. So if everybody gets up to $10,000 of loan forgiveness, it would cost more than $375 billion. If only people who owe $10,000 or less have their loans forgiven, it will cost $75 billion. With your Fast Facts, I'm Evan Kozlov. Welcome back. For as long as we can remember, it's been taboo to ask a woman her age, but has that changed? Dame Joan Collins has reignited the debate. She says it's tremendously rude to ask a woman her age or even discuss it at all. So what do you think? Is it okay now? We're talking about different generations to ask a woman her age. I'm super proud of being 40 years old. And you can ask me anytime. I get it. It's not for every woman. It's a generational thing. I think it's a privilege that I became 40. A lot of people don't get that privilege to age. I'm very proud of it. And to somehow not be able to do it for a woman because aging for a woman is different than a man is absurd. I love that. And yeah, I totally absurd. agree. And the context you put it in brings power to it. What if I was at a bar and I was like, how old are you? That's awful. No, okay. you're right. You know That's what I'm awful. saying? Like, yeah. is that like, is there different situations to make it okay? That's a great point. I'm often asked how old I am. But can I often answer? 20s? <laughs> well, no, I mean, people ask. I think there's a, like, we were in Vegas a couple weeks ago, and the lady took my ID. I assumed that she was going to give me, like, one of those, you adult player cards, right? She literally ID'd me, came back, and I was like, where's my, I'm a dope player card? And she goes. You thought you were getting free breakfast? Yeah. Like, <laughs> She's like, no, I was IDing you. Uh, she's like, to make sure you were 21. She's like, you are really over 21. And I was like, yeah. And also, my dope player card. First of all, we're going to need some context clues here, okay? People, like, I, and, and this is something that I feel like everybody gets their blessing. Me looking a little younger, that's my blessing, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold on to that. I'm not trying to do anything more. However, I'm going to need people to pay attention. Context clues are important. Therefore, you won't have to ask anybody how old they are because when they open their mouths, you'll know. Don't you feel like you show your age more by what you're saying and how you hold yourself? Uh, yes, well, to an extent. But I think some people kind of stay in a, stay the same age and just kind of, they stay the same age mentally. But the only time that I would ever ask anybody, man, woman, if, it's, if it came up organically and it had something to do with that, what I was gonna ask them, if I was like, you know, I, I went to the Super Bowl in 1995 or something, I'd be like, wait, how old were you? Were you, were right. you Good. alive for that? Were you, were you, know, you alive? I, or like, were you, you I wanna know like kind of context so we to see where we connect kind of timeline wise but I don't know why it would matter when you would just be how old are you just as a static question see I don't think so either unless you're blatantly trying to be rude right, like that right. example I gave but if you're like wait you live in Chicago how like how old are you when did you live there I lived there too I don't think that's rude you're at all beings. right you're trying to like or like did you go to college like what year did you graduate from high school right, or something right. like that yeah, I, mean, I don't think that's rude. Yeah, it's just how that. you deliver it, I think, Absolutely. is the part where it comes in rude. Totally. Okay, we by Joan Collins. We'll be right back. <laughs> I was like, gotta go. Promotional Consideration is brought to you by... Court records reveal FBI agents took 11 sets of classified records from former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate during a search on August 8th. In a post on Truth Social, a social media platform that he founded, Trump claimed that the documents were all declassified. 
The former president's comments prompted several of our viewers, including Beverly and Carol, to ask, can the president declassify documents? So let's verify. Our sources are the U.S. Constitution, Executive Order 13526, Kel McClanahan, Executive Director of the National Security Counselors, a nonprofit public interest law firm, and Richard Immerman, professor and historian at Temple University. According to our sources, a president does have the authority to declassify documents while they're in office, but it isn't a formal process. Let me walk you through the levels of classification in the U.S. government and when presidents can and cannot exercise their power to declassify government records. The three levels of classification in the U.S. government are confidential, secret, and top secret. National security expert Kel McClanahan says the classification assigned to a document dictates the level of damage that it's released would cause to the national security of the United States. According to the National Archives, a select group of government officials have classification authority, including the president, vice president, and agency heads. But let's focus on the president. The Supreme Court ruled the president's power over classified information comes from executive authority granted by the Constitution. A sitting U.S. president has wide-ranging authority to classify and declassify certain documents, but a former president does not. To classify a document, a sitting president has to make a plausible argument that it's related to national security, according to McClanahan. But he says there isn't the same requirement for declassifying documents. He doesn't have to give any reason for declassifying it. He can just say, I decide that this should be declassified and it's declassified. According to our sources, there isn't a formal protocol the president has to follow in order to declassify government information. But historian Richard Immerman says there is an informal one that presidents generally follow. First, the president consults all departments and agencies that have an interest in a classified document. They provide an assessment as to whether the document should stay classified for national security reasons, and if there's a dispute among the agencies, they debate it. But ultimately, it's the president that makes the decision on declassification. So we can verify, yes, a president can declassify documents, but there isn't a set protocol that they have to follow. So what about the documents found at Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate? While there are other federal laws that bar a former president from taking government documents, regardless of whether or not they were declassified. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Till. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter helps you distinguish between true and false information by answering your questions. It provides fast facts on trending topics, spotlights major stories, and even includes a daily fun fact for all those trivia buffs out there. Get Verify's fast facts delivered every weekday to your email inbox. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. Welcome back. So we only have like 20 seconds. We were talking about, is it okay to ask a woman her age? How about, is it okay to ask somebody the, what you paid for something? Is that Ooh. ever rude? Uh, you, have be, you have to be friends, I think. No, I think certain things you get a pass. Like if you're, if someone's sincerely interested in buying something, I think that's a How pass. How about a home? Yeah. That's, I, that's Uber a, drivers do that. Dude, I mean, I've asked. I've I'm like, you happen. don't even have to tell me, just ballpark it. So I know if I could even live that's, here. That's what we'll <laughs> see tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs>